Hello? Oh, that's good. Okay, so the Tales from the Mall project, basically, it started off as just me uh, writing some stories and uh, I, through interviewing people who work in shopping malls and who shop in shopping malls, which pretty much includes everybody, um, I realised that there was a kind of folk archive of sort of untold stories. Um, so I've, I'm putting an invite out to the populace to send me their mall stories. Um, these could be everything from I fell in love with a, w with a shopping mall, I fell in love in a shopping mall, I was falsely accused of... Uh, various crimes in a shopping mall, uh, my favourite retail experience and how I managed to shut down a mall with, uh, with the petrol bomb. So if anyone has any of these stories, send them to malltales at yahoo.com. In the meantime, story. Eva finds it sad that she only knows, what, that she only knows the plough and not what it means. White wine outside on a clear, cold night. We used to navigate by the stars. We used to be practical, she says. I hate the way we've turned them into metaphors. They gazed at the stars, reached for the stars, all that crap. He held her from behind, kissed her neck. Jesus, look at the moon. We never landed, she said. They used a film studio, wires, special effects. She'd found evidence, she said, on a conspiracy website. Her warm skin in the cold, breath in air, ice crystals crunching underfoot, the moon so bright, grey on white, ghost maps. One day we'll colonise it, and there'll be malls up there, she said. Malls of eternity, the mall of forgetting, the mall of tranquility. Comfort blueberry and jasmine twist fabric conditioner. Sainsbury's organic gala apples. Marks and Spencer's extra virgin olive oil, Durex sensitive 12 pack, Echinacea tablets, virgin everywhere all the time prepayment pack, Nurofen 400 milligrams, bird songs from around the world. Her breasts are too small and her feet too large, she complains. I could be a sprinting breastfeeding machine, she says. Run around delivering shots like espresso. She often makes jokes about not having children. Her clothes are a mixture of designer labels and charity shop, Mary Quant polka dots under filigree, ghost and save the children. She likes to tell people she got her 50s style Marlboro t-shirt from cancer research. She quit smoking in 2003, but still has fits, cravings, nostalgias for what she calls the salad days of nicotine. A light round her shoulders and head from the screen as she types. For hours, she can be like that. Where are you, Eva? Like he wasn't there in bed, behind, waiting for her to turn. I'm in living rooms. No, wait. I'm somewhere between beds and home units, home office units. Wait, sometimes. Sometimes she'd call him and start without even a hi and say, I'm in beds or I'm in toiletries, the way people said, I'm in banking or I'm in life insurance. Wait, he'd ask. Just tell me, are you in Ikea? Is this habitat? Where the hell are you, Evie? They are in a trendy restaurant in the Merchant City, and he feels underdressed, worries with so many waif-like model types all around, and Eva so stunning in her Prada. Why the hell she fixed this meeting outside office hours? Jeez, oh, how'd I how'd I end up like this? I spend my entire life studying the consumption patterns of housewives, she says. Is this a life? At least housewives do things. I've never even touched a box of drift or breeze. Do you know what the world's leading women's intimate hair exfoliant is called? Nair. It's one letter short of Nadir. Does your wife use Nair? Fuck, I think I'm actually dying just to be a housewife. They're a threatened species, by the way. Do you know how few housewives are actually left in the known world? Surrender is a dying art. She could go on, but she stops, analyzes his face. I'm sorry, she says. My seduction technique really blows. Blows? It's the same as sucks. Anyway, did I tell you my pitch for the relaunch of Hoover? He leans over and places his hand on her knee. This is before. There is wine and there in the kitchen. It is night. She has cut her hair short and stopped wearing heels. It's a look she calls demi-dyke. The Neo Project has been keeping her late at the office and sometimes she does not answer his texts. He throws something together in the walk. She's not eaten all day. Two TVs, two electricity bills, two gas boilers, two, a second car, right? So what? 
capitalism made me get divorced. Are you actually proposing that? I'm just saying, you and your ex used to own one washing machine, now you have two. A second bed, wardrobe, stereo, wireless subscription. She indicates the kitchen as he serves her the wok fried beans. Two woks, two sets of pots and pans, cutting boards, knives even. It's called duplicate commodities. I'm telling you, divorce is the new market. Think about it. The first wave of consumerism was based on nuclear family. Big family cars, shopping malls, right? We agree on that. Now, capitalism is tearing the family apart at least to feed on its corpse. Don't you think? Frankly, I didn't see an ad that said, leave Sarah. And even if I had, I'd have ignored it. He laughs. Eva skewers some beans with her fork, waves them before her mouth. Nothing lasts, she says. Changes everything. Says who? Buddha. Mohammed? No, this is the line they're trying out. The client likes it a lot. It works with the customer demographic. These people have had 25 jobs by the time they're 40. Moved country three times. Two abortions. Between 20 and 200 sexual partners. 53% divorce rate. Nothing lasts. Changes so you're giving them a desk that changes into a bed. Big deal. I get it. So what? What's it got to do with us? She stared at him, shook her head. Eat your beans, Evie. They're getting cold. She set down her fork, then pushed the plate away. It looks like romance, she said, but it's called market segmentation. Evie, don't fucking start. I should never have left you. You should, you should never have left your wife for me.